Hi, welcome to Environmental Ethics. My name is Mark Thorsby and I'll be your professor over the next few months um, as we explore some the exciting topic of ethics and also the very important and now widely publicized issue of environmentalism. We'll be combining both issues and taking a long hard look. This is also an FYE course which stands for first year experience. I've seen from my roster list that most of you are new students, so welcome to university. One of the other objectives for this course will be to provide you with some of the basic research methods that you'll be utilizing over the next four years or perhaps six to eight years of your life. So we're, we're also going to try to build a wide, and concise vocabulary with which to discuss environmental debates, but one in which you can also um, use for all of your other classes. We'll also be looking at doing a lot of writing assignments. Um, that'll be one of the focal points of the course is to improve your writing uh, into further into a scholarly level. Um, anyway, I don't want to spend too much time on that. Let me just say a few brief things about the um, about the course in general. Um, besides simply advancing our writing skills and developing research methods and research skills, but also we'll be concerned with being able to critically articulate, explicate, and critique philosophical texts. We'll be looking at a number of philosophical papers written by a number of philosophers, all that have to do uh, with many of the various angles of environmentalism and ethics. Um, in terms of required reading, um, you have one textbook, and that's Environmental Ethics. It's edited by um, uh, Louis and Paul Pajman. It's the fifth edition and it's located in the library right now. I encourage you, if you can find a different edition, feel free to do so. Uh, I mean, not a different, yeah, an earlier edition to save some money, perhaps on Amazon. That's fine with me. Suggest you reading one of the books that we'll be going over. This time around, I didn't require it as reading, but I strongly encourage you to check out this book. It's called Being Good, A Short Introduction to Ethics by Simon Blackburn, which actually over the course of the next two weeks, I'm going to be introduced, two to three weeks I should say, I'll be introducing you to um, some of the basic core concepts in ethical theory. Um, ones in, and we'll be talking about a range of topics, not simply environmentalism over the next few weeks, but then we're going to move concisely into environmentalism. Another book I would encourage you to check out, and these are all located on your syllabus, which I encourage you to read, uh, is an Environmental Ethics by Botzler. There's another great book by Peter Singer called One World. I encourage you to look at that. Also Practical Ethics by the same author. Um, another book I encourage you to read would be Silent Spring, which really gave rise to environmentalism in the 1970s. Well, even though the book was published earlier than that. Uh, and there's, there's so many good books actually there. So um, as we go through the course of the semester, one of the things I'll be trying to do is uh, provide you with new sources and I'll be oftentimes giving you guys ideas for your papers and also um, giving you ideas for further research. In terms of requirements, um, you're going to have to write one research paper, um, you'll have to write a number of response papers, um, you'll also be graded for participation, there'll also be a midterm presentation instead of an examination of a presentation, and then in the very end there'll be one final fluid examination. Um, check your syllabus if you want to know the exact break, grade breakdown. Um, in terms of various policies, um, plagiarism, of course, will not be tolerated, uh, which is obvious. I shouldn't even have to state it, but every semester I do, in fact, get papers where people plagiarize things, usually the Wikipedia, so please don't plagiarize from Wikipedia. Um, makeup policy, if you miss an assignment due to some sort of illness you, or sickness or whatnot, you have one week from the date due to submit it. Um, let's see, I don't want to spend all my time going over that kind of stuff. Let me give you an idea of some of the things we'll be covering. Um, in the class besides the general introduction that I'll be going over in the next two to three weeks. Um, the first text we're going to be looking at comes by Lynn White, very important text, The Historical Roots of Our Ecological Crisis. This really is a great text and it's chapter two in your book. Um, and it's a great text for really laying down um, some of the core issues, and issue, uh, core issues and problems that we need to be thinking about and dealing with in terms of environmental ethics. And in terms of the environmental crisis we're seeing right now, uh, we'll also be reading a little bit of Kant. There's a small essay we'll be reading called Rational Beings Alone Have Moral Worth by Immanuel Kant. We'll be taking the Kant, who is a very famous philosopher and ethicist. Um, he'll be a rationalist ethicist, I guess I would say. Um, he offers us the idea that only rational entities have moral worth, meaning, essentially, that animals don't have moral value. Now, it doesn't mean for Kant, though, that we should hurt animals, right? He says, well, we'll get into it in detail, but he does say that we shouldn't kick dogs insofar as 
they, um, insofar as doing so, actually creates a habit wherein one, wherein which you may end up hurting other people. So he sees our relationship to nature always in terms of a certain sort of anthropocentrism. And we're going to talk about what that word means. It basically means uh, a human-centered viewpoint in ethics. And that's what Kant is going to argue for. But then directly after Kant, we're going to be looking at Peter Singer, who's a utilitarian. And we're going to be discussing that, what utilitarianism is. Um, and he provides a utilitarian defense of animal liberation. So we'll be looking at that. Some other people will be, will be reading John Stuart Mill, Aldo Leopold, Arne Ness. Um, forgive me, I'm taking a look at the cells right now. We're also looking at texts by Christopher Stone, Garrett Hardin, Lifeboat Ethics and the Tragedy of Commons by Garrett Hardin. I think you will enjoy immensely. It's a provocative and interesting text. We'll also be looking at environmental racism and also uh, how other cultures view the environmental crisis, in particular if you're looking at Islamic environmental ethics and African, an African perspective on environmental crisis by Sugun Agumben. So these are a few of the thinkers we'll be looking at. Um, in terms of some of the core issues we'll be doing, we'll be looking at responsibility. We'll also be looking at justice and what is valuable. We'll be looking at the distinction between intrinsic and instrumental value. But I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. I don't want to scare you with too many concepts. Um, I do want to, however, leave you with a, an idea, if I could. Um, one, a very famous philosopher uh, of justice is actually John Rawls. This is his text, uh, Theory of Justice. And just in the beginning, he gives this idea of what justice is. He writes, quote, Justice is the first virtue of social institutions, as truth is of all systems of thought. Justice is the first virtue of all social institutions. So one of the questions we'll be asked in this course concerns environmental justice. Namely, if justice is the first virtue of social institutions, the question namely becomes, what is the obligation and the relation of our social institutions to nature and to the ecological system as a whole? Um, one of the other, I'm mentioning John Rawls for two reasons, not simply because, one, because this is an interesting idea, but also there's this idea of his called the veil of ignorance. Namely, that he says that, of course, hypothetically, that the best sorts of laws or the laws that will be the most just laws are ones that promote equality, right? And so he has this kind of formulaic system that you could think about. It's a hypothetical, though, right? It's this idea that if you were designing laws in a state, what if you didn't have any facts about the state? For instance, you wouldn't actually know what type of person you would be in the state, right? If like, in when designing laws, if I don't know what type of participant in that society I will be or what type of role I'll play, then, then I'm probably bound to promote the laws that are the most equal, right? Because I could end up being a, um, I could end up being poor, right? I could end up being rich. I could be, end up being of a minority class, right? And if, but if I didn't know this, I would always tend to promote the laws that are the most equal and the most just. Um, so. John Rawls has this idea for political philosophy, but in terms of environmental ethics, I want to push a little bit further. What would it mean when we devise rules and laws in the most just, if we asked ourselves not simply um, what type of members we might play in the society, but what type of members we might play for if we, in the biotic community as a whole, right? What if we start thinking holistically about justice? How will that change our perspective? So I guess the question I'd like you to answer, if you'd be so kind as to leave some comments on the YouTube site, to, um, is to really answer this question, which is, do you think that we can expand our responsibility to nature as a whole, and if so, on what grounds? Or are we, as I was mentioning earlier, as Immanuel Kant might say, bound to only respecting human beings as having moral worth? Can we, as it were, widen uh, what we believe counts in terms of value and importance? Can the environment even be the subject of an ethics? So if you could just answer this question or at least comment on one of these issues, that would be excellent and I would enjoy reading your, um, your responses. So anyhow, I look forward to seeing you. I'll be there next week, so I apologize I'm not here. I'm actually in California right now, hence the wilderness behind me. Um, but I'll be there next week, and I look forward to meeting you, and I look forward to really hitting some hard-hitting, inf informative stuff and also getting to know you and work with you. So have a good week, and I'll see you soon. Goodbye.